Paul's house this morning. It's been good to us. Maybe a little wet out there, but you know, we're be glad it's dry here this morning. I'm just glad God knows when to send the rain. So me and you would be a big mess, but he knows what he's doing. And spring's almost here, so we look forward to it. Everybody's had a good week. We thank you for praying for the family this week, praying for the wife and her family. It's good to see it's come through out there the other night. See some friendly faces. And I saw folks I hadn't seen in 25 years this week, I guess. You know, God's grace is sufficient. God's grace is sufficient for every need. You know, it makes a funeral a whole lot easier if we know where they're going. It makes things a whole lot easier like that. Just remember the family, remember the wife, her sisters, and mother-in-law. My mother-in-law's a good woman. She's a different kind of woman. You just got to kind of leave her alone and let her have her space. But they will just remember her. It's, everybody gets gone now. It seems like when that's this will be the hardest times. And so my wife had a little harder time yesterday. We went back up to the graveyard yesterday evening. But, but I'm glad there's a better place to go. It just seemed like God sat down on where that funeral Friday evening we had a good time. And it's, 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 I don't know what really all that sad. You know when you know where somebody's going, and it makes it real easy to preach a funeral like that. But, just appreciate his prayers. If you got your Bible this morning, be looking in the book of Ruth, chapter number one. <clears throat> Ruth, chapter number one. Real familiar passage of scripture. We're going to read this morning, book of Ruth, right after the book of Judges. I'm going to talk to you a little while this morning about this woman by the name of Ruth for a little while. We'll read down through this first chapter. And we're probably going to cover the whole book of Ruth real quickly this morning. Things that went on in her life. We're going to read chapter number one. This is one of my most favorite <coughs> books in the Bible, the book of Ruth. The Bible said, Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judea, went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and two sons. And the name of the man was Imelech, and the name of the wife, Naomi, and the name of his two sons, Malon and Chilion, Phraates of Bethlehem, Judea. And they came to the country of Moab and continued there. The Bible said to begin with in verse 1, they just went there to sojourn, and then they wound up staying there. The Bible said in verse 3, and Imelech and Naomi's husband died, and she was left and her two sons. And they took them wives of the women of Moab, the name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other Ruth, and they dwelled there about ten years. And Malon and Chilion died also, both of them. And the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. Then she arose with her daughter-in-laws, that she might return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people and given them bread. Wherefore she went forth out of the place where she was, and her two daughter-in-laws with her, and they went on the way to return into the land of Judea. And Naomi said unto her daughters-in-law, Go return each to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. <clears throat> the Lord grant you that you may find rest, each of you, in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them and lifted up their voice and wept. And they said unto her, Surely we will return with the end of my people. And Naomi said, Turn again, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Are, ye, are there yet any more sons in my womb that they may be your husbands? Turn again, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. And if I should say I have hope, if I should have a husband also tonight and should also bear sons, would you tarry for them till they were grown? Would you stay for them for have, having husbands? Nay, my daughters, for it grieveth me much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. And they lifted up their voice and wept again. And Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, and Ruth clave unto her. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law has gone back into her people and to her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or return from following after thee. For whether thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Where thou diest, will I die? And there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also all, but death part thee and me. 
And when she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her. <clears throat> so they two went, it, went until they came to Bethlehem. And it came to pass when they came to Bethlehem that all the city was moved about them and said, Is this Naomi? And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi, call me Myra, for the Almighty hath dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full, and the Lord hath brought me home again empty. Why then call you me Naomi, seeing the Lord hath testified against me, and the Almighty hath afflicted me? So Naomi returned, and Ruth of Moabitess, her daughter-in-law, with her, which returned out of the country of Moab, and they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of the barley harvest. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come before you once again to thank you for this another opportunity. I thank you, Lord, for loving us the way you do. I thank you, Lord, for your mercy and grace, your kindness. Thank you for this opportunity today to talk to you. Thank you for the good songs we've already heard. Thank you for these that's met out. Dear God, we need your help this morning. I pray you'd pull up around us for a little while. I pray you'd hedge us in. I pray you'd give us that we need to say this morning. Give us that that they need to hear for a little while. And I pray we can leave here saying it's been good to be in your house. And I pray you'd touch these objects that's been mentioned, these that are sick. I pray you'd touch their bodies, touch their family, touch these that's lost loved ones, dear Lord, in comfort in the only way that you can. And we'll just thank you for everything you've done for us. Dear Lord, please help us here for a little while today. I need your help. I pray you'd clear our minds, dear Lord. Help us to get everything else off our mind for just a few minutes. And do that you can only do, because in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> we just read the Ruth chapter number 1. And I said a minute ago, I want to talk to you about this lady by the name of Ruth for just a little while this morning. I want to preach on the subject for a little while, the romance of redemption. Now, if you find the book of Ruth, we said just after the book of Judges, and you know, this is a jewel in dark times when you get this far into the Bible reading. You know, the day of the judges were, were a time when men done things that seemed right in their own eyes. It was a wicked time. It was a dark time that was going on here in the Old Testament. But you know, God had a plan when this book of Ruth started. You know, He had a plan even before the book of Genesis was wrote. You know, I'm glad God's got a plan for our life this morning. He's got a plan for each and everybody in this building. Got a plan for every church in this county. And you may look at Ruth and say, well, Ruth is kind of an unusual woman. But you got to look where Ruth came from. She lived in Moab. The Bible said that's God's wash pot. You know, Moab was a, was, a, was a place that was full of idolatry. It was a filthy place, a place full of sin, a place full of wickedness. But as we read, we know we read about a family here in this chapter, a man by the name of Emily, had a wife by the name of Naomi. But during these dark times, God had a plan. And He picked this little girl out by the name of Ruth. And you know, she became one of the greatest women you'll read about in this Bible. God had a plan through this family. God, when you look at Ruth, God put her in the lineage of Christ. Man, that was a high honor. It was a privilege for her to be in the lineage of Christ. No greater honor could have been bestowed upon a woman back during this day. And you look at Ruth and say, well, she was a nobody. Let me say, God can take a nobody and make something out of them this morning. He can make a somebody out of, no, out of a nobody. So I want to preach a little while this morning on the romance of redemption. And I mean, if you look at the things that's going on here in chapter number one, you know, there's some guidelines for me and you that we've got to meet in our lives that Ruth even had to meet before she could be great in God's sight. I mean, man, this is a great book if you just get in it and get to read this, study on it, ponder on it. But you know, the greatest thing that Ruth found, man, she found the love of Jesus Christ before this book is over. Greatest thing anybody could ever find. You know, I'm glad this morning I found that love one day of Jesus Christ. Nothing greater could ever happen to my life. But when you think about Ruth, you think about Bethlehem and this family to begin with. Now this family lived in Bethlehem and they moved down to Moab. Now while this family lived in Moab, you know this young lady Ruth married into this family. And man, she got a blessing when she married into this family. If she hadn't married into this family, she had never been in the lineage of Christ she had never been in that line and she would never got to go back to Bethlehem where God's people was at. 
Now, if you'll notice the book of Ruth, there's two main characters. The first one will be Ruth. She was a Moabitess. She was a stranger. She was lost. Man, she was an outcast. She was cut off from God's people. Does that remind you of anybody before you got saved? Hey, we was cut off. We was an outcast. Man, we was a stranger from God's family before we got saved. You know, I'm glad we got into that family one day. Then you'll find the second character in the book, the main character, who is Boaz. There's some other people, but Ruth's the main character in this book, and Boaz comes right in second right beside her. You'll find Boaz as being the kinsman redeemer. You know, he was God's man. He was a royal redeemer in this chapter. You don't find any better picture probably in the Bible than, than the bridegroom and the bride you do here in the book of Ruth. I mean, it's a picture of Jesus. It's a picture of the church. It's a picture of the Savior. Now, I want you to notice four places real quickly that you'll find Ruth in this book that we're going to look at for a little while this morning. Then we'll get into the message. Chapter number one, you'll find her in a foreign land or a field. She lived in Moab. It was a land of darkness, a land of idols, a land of superstition. And the most importantly, it was a land that was away from God. Knew nothing about him in chapter number one. Then chapter two, you'll find Ruth in a field. And maybe you ought to thank God in chapter two, she winds up in a field. I mean, God done some big things in this field when Ruth got in. Then in chapter three, you see Ruth at the feet of the redeemer. And you know, I'm glad we've got a place to find some peace this morning at the feet of Jesus. Then in chapter four, you'll find that Ruth's in a family. You know, it should bless us what kind of family this is this morning that Ruth got into. You know, we're blessed this morning to be in the family of God. There ain't no other family like that. Once a person gets saved, man, you've got brothers and sisters in Christ all over this world. I know a lot of times we don't act like that. But man, once we get saved, man, we're kin through the blood of Christ. You know, if you're saved, Lord, to shout glory to God this morning, there ain't no greater family than the family of God. So you'll find Ruth there in chapter number four in a family. Now I want you to notice also the book of Ruth's got three parts. You'll find to begin with how that first you see how Ruth was sought out when this book begins. And second, you'll see how Ruth was taught here in a little while, how that Naomi taught her some things. And you know, it's great to be a witness and win souls. You know, people need to be taught after they get saved. A lot of times we throw them off over in the corner and forget about them. We need to teach them. The Bible said in Matthew 28, 20, the Bible says teaching them to deserve all things whatsoever I have commanded you. You know, a new convert needs the Word of God to grow with. And thirdly, you'll see also how that Ruth was bought. Now, there was a price paid here in the book of Ruth. But ain't you glad this morning, man, we're glad that you was purchased with a price one day. A price that nobody could pay but Jesus Christ. With the precious blood of Christ without spot and without blemish. Man, you're looking at one this morning that's bought, been bought. I don't belong to myself. I belong to Him. So there's three things we're going to look at here about Ruth this morning. How that she was sought out, how she was taught, and how she was bought. So number one, I want to look this morning how that Ruth was sought out. You ever stop and thought why Jesus came into this world? He came to seek people. Bible said in Luke 19, 10, said, For the Son of Man is coming to seek and to save that which was lost. Man, we're going to thank God that He came to seek out a church. He came to seek out a bride. I'm glad He sought me out one day. I'm glad He didn't forget about me. I'm glad, man, that He comes seeking a little old 10 year old boy one day. Man, and He come out there and redeemed me by His grace. So when you think about Ruth being sought out, I believe there's about five links in the chain of grace in this chapter that saw Ruth out. And you know, I'm glad it's by grace this morning. God's grace is still amazing. It's not by the works of righteousness. It's not by any rules or creeds. But man, it's still by grace this morning. So I'm going to give you five things real quickly in the chain of grace that, that saw Ruth out. Then these five links, number one, man, there was a famine that saw Ruth out. I mean, you think about that there was a famine going on It told us here in chapter number 1. Now, Ruth may not have known a whole lot about this famine because she was living down in Moab. But let me say, God was working behind the scenes and Ruth may not even know it. 
You know, I'm glad before I got saved, God was working behind the scenes. They didn't even realize it, but God was doing something. Bible tells us here in the book of Ruth, the scripture said there was a famine in Bethlehem. And man, if they, you ever thought there'd be a famine anywhere, it wouldn't have been in Bethlehem because that's the house of bread and praise. That's where God's people lived at. You know, it was a sad day. There was a famine in that land. God was having to bring punishment upon His people. Let a famine come up on the land. Didn't have any bread to eat. You know, we're living in a day and time right now. Who ever thought we'd have a famine like we're having in the United States? Hey, we've got a famine of the bread of life. We've got a famine of the preaching of the book. We've got a famine of teaching it. We've got a famine, man, of singing the songs of Zion. Man, I like preaching this morning, but we've got a family. Man, we need some good teaching like we used to have. That teaching will make you grow. Scripture says they had a famine in Bethlehem and Judea. And man, we've got a famine in a nation right now that was founded on the Word of God. Man, Amos said over in the book of Amos, there'd be a famine in the hearing the Word of God. Man, we've got a famine in hearing right now. So there, when she was beginning to be sold out, but God, God let a famine happen to begin with. That's the first chain in, in, this, in the grace that God used. And the second thing He used seeking her out, there was a famine. There was a man by the name of Amalek, had a wife by the name of Naomi. He had two sons by the name of Malon and Chilion. Hey, this family left the, pre the very presence of God to go down to Moab. You know, I always like to tell people, you better be careful not take your children to Moab. You're living in the presence of God, man, you better keep them there. Yeah. These folks run from church to church Sunday after Sunday. They'll stay in one for a little while and run to another. Man, if those children's getting fed, you better be careful where you take them. You may take them somewhere, it may be like Moab. So this family left the presence of God, went down to Moab. But you know, God kept using this family even while they was in Moab. You know, it's God. It's good that God will use a family. And God still uses families. He can still use a mom and dad. He can still use the children to get His work done no matter where they're at. Now I wonder, when, when, while they were down, I've often wondered while this family was down in Moab. Emelech and his two sons and his wife, they met up with these two girls and married Ruth and Orpah. I wonder if every now and then old Emelette may have looked at them two girls and got to tell them a little bit about Bethlehem. Got to tell them a little bit about that place called Jerusalem over there. I wonder if he got to tell them about that place, man, where love was rooted deep and God dwelled in that place. Because, man, something happened in the mind of Ruth when they started to lose, when they started to leave Moab. I believe that this man had told them girls a little about that place. And they were something got to stirring down in her heart. Man, you tell people about Jesus every now and then, something will get to stirring when they get under Holy Ghost conviction. Man, I believe old Emelette may have looked at them and said, this place don't satisfy me. Man, when you've been around where God dwells, nothing else will ever satisfy me. Something got to happen, and this chain of grace got to work. There was a family, then Ruth got into this family that loves God. Then there was something else happened when he was seeking her out. There was a funeral took place. Man, there was a dark time down in Moab. I mean, man, there was a husband died, then two boys died, three funerals right there in a short amount of time. Man, you ever noticed a lot of times, only times some people have come to the house of God when they're a funeral. You know, it'd be a shame to live like that. Man, I saw folks this week, I know it's the only time they've been in the house of God in years when they came to a funeral. Man, it's a shame, man. I, I don't want it to be said about me the only time I hear the Word of God is at a few. I mean, you think about what's going on. You know, I'm glad when they said, let us go to the house of God. Let us go worship. Let us go praise Him. You know, nothing ought to thrill our hearts anymore than to be in the house of God. But some people never go to the house of God unless there's a few. Here's three lonely graves down in Moab. Had to be a sad time. God used a famine. He's got a family and He's using a funeral seeking this woman out. And let me say, God used something else toward Ruth. He used fear. Some people say, well, you believe fear will get people into the house of God and get them saved? Man, I got scared tonight. I got saved. I got afraid of dying and going to hell. Man, I got scared that night that I would never go to heaven. We ought to preach on sin. We ought to preach repentance. 
Man, but we are to preach hell hot. Man, when people re reject the Lamb of God, it ought to bring a fear over them. It ought to scare me and you. Man, we ought to have a godly fear about us. You know, I don't know if there's much to anybody's salvation if they don't have a godly fear of an almighty God. Man, when you get saved, it puts a fear down on the inside. Man, lost people used to have fear of God. Man, they tell me years ago a drunk would walk by the church house. He'd get on the other side of the road and take his hat off because he had that much respect and fear of the house of God. Man, we need a godly fear again. You say, well, where did fear come into Ruth's slide? Man, she had just had a funeral. And we look at Naomi, Naomi looks at her daughter-in-law. She looks at Ruth and Orpah and says, you need to go back to your country. You need to go back to your people. But Ruth said, entreat me not. <laughs> Ruth said, I can't leave you now. I've heard too much about you, God. I've heard too much about where you live. I've heard too much about your country. Ruth said, I want your God to be my God. I believe Ruth began to tremble with fear and a holy fear of God. I believe that old man had told them something about that country. Told them something about God. And man, when her mother-in-law got to going back, there was something drawing her to God's country. I believe she had a godly fear. Man, I, I'm just 48 years old, but I, I'm old enough to remember back. Uh, back several years ago when I was small, I remember times I used to see people hold the back of the pew. They'd have fear when an altar call, stand there and tremble their knuckles and be white. They were so scared to go out of the church building. Some folks used to get in the altar and pray over them all night. They had a godly fear about it. But you know the Bible said in Romans 3.18, there's no fear of God before their eyes. And that's talking about in the day and time we're living in. Luke chapter 12 and verse 5 said that I will forewarn you whom you shall fear for whom which after he hath killed hath power to cast in, into hell. Ye I say unto you fear him. Matthew 28 Matthew 10 and 28 the Bible said fear not them which kill the body but are not able to kill the soul but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Hey, Ruth began to fear this one and had control of heaven and hell. You know, we sang that song Amazing Grace a lot of times. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. But we forget another part of that. You know, a lot of times we forget the part that says, "Twas grace that taught my heart to fear. In grace my fears relieved. Hey, grace will teach you to fear God. It will teach you to have godly reverence. Man, we need to realize this morning grace will make you fear. And it will teach you also to believe. So God's used these four things there so far on her. He's used the famine there. He's used that family. He's used a family and he used fear and a funeral. And look at something else God used seeking her out. God used a field. Hey, they're in the book of Ruth now at the end of the chapter. And they go back to Bethlehem. In chapter 2, man, you find how that Ruth goes out into the field. And God used that field. Ruth's the widow. Under the Levitical system, Ruth had the, had the rights to go into that field, fall in behind the reapers. But all she had the right to do was go in and just pick up the scraps, pick up the leftovers. Let me say this, Lord, as a church, as a people, as a Christian, hey, you don't have to pick up the leftovers this morning. Hey, we don't have to pick up the scraps that's left behind. I believe we've got the mentality in the day and time we're living in. All we want is just a few scraps from God. All we want is just a few of the leftovers. But man, you know, we have some of them handfuls of purpose. Them handfuls on purpose. You know, it's a blessing every once in a while that God will throw a handful of purpose on us. Now you get in the field, you find that there's a man by the name of Boaz there and he owns the field. He's got his eyes on it. He's looking out on it. And he sees a stranger out there and says, Whose damsel is this? And somebody said, That's Ruth. It's Naomi's daughter-in-law. Hey, he got to watching her pick up the scraps. I believe that old Boaz's eyes began to tear up. I believe he got to thinking in his heart, I ain't never seen a woman like this. Hey, there was love at first sight right here. Boaz fell in love as soon as he seen her. Can't you imagine Boaz pulling those servants off to the side and said, boy, she needs more scraps. She needs more than the leftovers. Can't you imagine him put, pulling those servants off to the side and said, every now and then, drop a handful on purpose. 
Man, can't you imagine them servants reaching down and getting as much as they could get in the hand and throwing it down there? And just looking back and smiling a little bit and saying, she's getting more than she needs. She's getting more than she deserves. Man, ain't you glad every once in a while somebody will throw you a handful? Ain't you glad every now and then, man, I'm glad every once in a while I get behind the pulpit God will throw a handful on them. Man, ain't you glad every now and then when you're listening to the preaching, teaching, or the songs of Zion, God will throw a handful in your heart. Man, I was glad there Friday evening. Man, about, about 1 o'clock, about 20 after or something, it come my time to get up to speak at my father-in-law's funeral. Man, I had never been that nervous in my life. But man, I was glad God dropped a handful and helped me a little while. Man, I was glad them handfuls got to come in there. Ain't you glad every now and then God will bless you in the way that you cut this runs over a little bit. And you can't help yourself. you got to thank Him for what He's done for you. Man, the day I got saved, I'm glad God threw a handful on me. Man, don't you like it when them just overflows a little bit? And you get to the place you can't help it. We've got to the place it seems like a day of time we forgot about shouting a little bit. Man, it scared these young ones to death anymore. A lot of them in the church house. If somebody stood up shouting over their salvation, man, they say nothing wrong with making a joyful noise into the Lord. Man, they need some of that. We need some old-fashioned, old-time religion again back in our nation, back in the church house again. Man, used to, man, go out and throw a handful. Man, I was you remember back when I was growing up, some of these old women, that would be bobby pins flying everywhere. Man, they'd be a praising God for just being good to them. Just putting something on the table to eat that week. Just paying a bill that they didn't know how it was going to get paid. Just saving one of the young ones. Man, they had something to be thankful for. Hey, we've got more than we've ever thought about having in the day and time we're living in. More than we need. We throw away more than we ever have more food than we ever even think about needing. And we walk around so ungrateful. Man, you ought to thank your seat when you go ahead and pull up the Sunday dinner that that handful that God threw down on the table. I mean, that's a handful from God. Where would you have got that from if God hadn't given it to you? Hey, you get up and go to work tomorrow. God will give you a handful on purpose right there, the health and the strength to go. I mean, old Ruth, man, she got in that field picking up the scraps. But Boaz said, hold it, she needs a little bit more than that. Hey, you know God knows what we need when we need it. So man, he got to seek in her house. Ruth was sold. He used those five chains right there in his grace. Then look how Ruth was taught. Can you imagine Ruth going to work in that field? Naomi says, man, you better pray that God will bless you today. She goes to work in gleaning. Can you imagine all at once she's been down there, probably sweat running off her forehead? Been following around, just picking up a little bit, probably worried to death. Am I going to get enough to feed me and Naomi? Can't you imagine, man, the, the, the roots are damn it. Naomi's going to teach her some things in just a minute. But can't you imagine she's looking down and all of a sudden looks up? Greatest sight she's ever seen a man by the name of Boaz standing there. Can't you imagine her looking down and she looks up? And all of a sudden she falls in love. Never seen nobody like Boaz. Man, they was love at first sight in this field. Can't you imagine her falling in love with him? Man, I'm glad that night I got saved. And he looked down and I got to look up at something I'd never seen. Got to see the Scriptures in a way I'd never seen. Got to see the Holy Ghost move in my life in a way I'd never seen. Only because he looked down at a little lost boy. And I got to look back up at a holy saint. Boaz saw her and said, I love her. He said, I don't know. Hey, I, have you ever stopped? I don't know what he saw in her. Hey, she, she was a reject. She was a Moabite. She was an outcast. She was an idolater. But when I think about that, I don't know what he ever saw in something like me. Man, I'm about as backward as anybody as you'll ever find. Man, he could have picked somebody out. He could have used a whole lot more. Had a whole lot more talent. Had a whole lot more intelligence. Man, but I'm glad he saw a little something in me that passed me by. Man, I'm glad he looked down that day let me look back up. Man, I'm glad he loved me. I'm glad he loved me just the way I was. Ain't you glad God loved you when you was unlovable? When you was miserable? When you was out in that field? Can't you imagine the end of the days come now? And Ruth's going home with those handfuls loaded down. Hey, I don't 
believe she's going home sad that day. I believe she's going home skipping, probably singing a little bit. Probably, sat, probably a shouting a little bit, happy on the inside. Hey, when you meet the Savior, man, it'll put a spark in you. It'll put a shout in you that nothing else will. Can't you imagine Ruth coming home over Joy and Naomi looked at her and says, Ruth, what's wrong with you? Why are you so happy? Can't you imagine Naomi saying, we're widows down here. We're just barely going to get by. But can't you imagine Ruth saying, there's two reasons I'm happy. When I went out this morning and didn't know what I was going to bring home. But can't you imagine Ruth looking at Naomi and said, I brought the best home that you could be brought. Can't you imagine Ruth saying, I brought some handfuls home. Hey, you know the night I got saved, I didn't bring home God's second or thirds. I brought the best home. Hey, old now Ruth's come home with the best that Boaz had. Naomi said, is there another reason you're happy? And I believe old Ruth probably said, yeah. I believe Ruth said, I saw him. Never seen anybody like him. Can't you imagine Ruth with them tears running down her face? She said, I ain't never seen nobody like this man. She said, he looked down and I looked up and we fell in love. Can't you imagine Ruth looking back at her and said, I met a man. She said, I'm so glad I met this man. He knows all about me. Hey, I'm glad I met a man that knows all about me one day. He know my weaknesses, he know my faults, but he still loves me. Look what Ruth does. She said, I am. And Naomi begins to teach her. Naomi teaches her about three things. Naomi, when you get out over in the book of Ruth, she teaches her about a new relationship. She said, Ruth, you're no longer an outcast. You're no longer a stranger. Hey, Ruth pretty much looks at her and says, You're gonna be but said, You're gonna be royal. Said, Ruth, you're a child of a king now. You're living in the whole land of the holy city. You're living a different life. Second Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Hey, Amen. I thank God he took my, rag, my rags off one day upon a robe of righteousness. Yeah. Hey, Naomi's teaching her some things about a new relationship that she's got now. Naomi also taught her about her new riches. Hey, Naomi said, Ruth, he's a rich man. He's a wealthy man. Hey, the day we got saved and got into that new relationship, our father's rich. He owns it all. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. He owns it all. Hey, we're an heir to a kingdom. Hey, our father's rich this morning. Hey, we're partakers in it all. Man, there's riches that are untold this morning. Hey, me and my wife, hey, we got a checking account over birth for the first citizens. Hey, with that checking account over there, both our names are on it, it's a joint account. Hey, both of us can write a check. Can, 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 both of us can write checks and it'll be honored by that bank. But you know, there's something better than that, man. When I got saved, I got in on the same checking account that Jesus is on. Right. Hey, man, He'll take care of us with this land. Hey, man, you think about what kind of Savior we got. He's rich. We're an heir to a kingdom. Naomi also teaches her about, teaches her a little bit about her new rest. She said, Ruth, hey, you got a rest. You got a rest that this world don't know nothing about. You're back down in Bethlehem. And you've met a man that's got some rest for your soul. Hey, you know God's people's got some rest that the world don't have. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, they've been times in my life, my ministry, I went a lot of times from daylight to dark, never lay down, never go to sleep. And all of a sudden, that good rest from heaven will show up, pull up beside you and hit me. Hey, you ever had one of them days you've been working all day, maybe running late? Man, man, but getting about church time, you run in the house, the youngins is running everywhere. Time you get to church, you're about half crazy. But man, they get to singing that first song about halfway through it, that rest falls over you. Hey, the Bible says in Matthew 11, 28, coming to me, all you that labor are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Hey, old Ruth said, or Naomi said, Ruth, you've got some rest that the world don't have. Hey, Naomi looks at Ruth and says, you've been working all day and you're tired. She said, you just wait till Boaz goes in and goes to sleep. 
Then you go in and kneel at his, kneel down at his feet and you'll find rest. Hey, she found more rest than she ever found when she found Boaz. Hey, you glad we got a place called Calvary we can run to and kneel down and find rest? Hey, we got a resting place in Jesus. Hey, Ruth's been sawed out. She's been taught. And I want you to notice something else. Ruth was bowed also. You know, Boaz pretty much looked at Ruth on over down toward the end of this book. I ain't got time to turn read all of it. Just kind of tell me the story of what's going on. But Ruth was bowed. Boaz tells Ruth later on, if we're going to get married, there's some legal things that I've got to take care of. Hey, Boaz had to go down to Moab. He had to go pay some debts. And, hey, if these boys that Ruth when, that was married to down there, the boy that died, if he owed any debts down in Moab, Boaz had to go down there and take care of those debts. Hey, there was a legal thing and right thing to do. He said, I'll have to pay for everything in your past, everything you owe. Ain't you glad we got a Savior, man, and look paid everything in our past? Right. Look past everything we'd ever done and paid our sin then. He took care of them all. He paid for them. You go to chapter number 4 and verse number 10. Boaz said he purchased Ruth to be his wife. He said, I've got the money and I'm going to buy her to be my wife. He paid the price for her. Now, man, when me and my wife got married and she came down the aisle, all I could say is I loved her. I didn't have to buy her. I didn't have to pay for her. But this marriage of Boaz and Ruth was a little bit different. Hey, when they get married, Boaz can look at her and say, I love you. But secondly, he can look at her and say, I purchased you also to be my wife. He can look at her and say, you belong to me. I purchased you. Man, ain't that a good picture of the church in Jesus you know, there's going to be a wedding in the sky one day. Revelation 19 and verse 7. The Bible said, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to Him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come. And His wife hath made herself ready. Hey, Jesus is the heavenly Boaz. Man, we're, we're going to, He's going to gird Himself and serve us at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Right. You know, the bride is the church that's purchased. You know, the only thing Jesus probably ever bought in this world was the church. He purchased it with His blood. Right. He paid a sin debt. You know what a blessing it is to know we've been bought and paid for. And you think about that wedding day in the sky. The angels are going to be looking in. They ain't going to be looking at us, but they're going to be looking at Him. Can't you imagine that wedding day Jesus is going to look at us and say, I love you. And I bought you also as my bride. Hey, that ought to be shouting ground this morning. He loved us and he bought us and he purchased us. You know, Boaz loved Ruth. Boaz purchased Ruth. And Boaz forgave Ruth of all her past debts. Have hey, you ever read over in the book of Hosea about a man by the, man by the name of Hosea and a lady by the name of Gomer? Hey, you remember Gomer was an adulteress. Was an adulterous woman. You know, Hosea married Gomer knowing what she was. You remember they had been married for just a little bit of time. Time went by. And old Gomer committed adultery and got pregnant. But you remember old Hosea looked past that. He said, I forgive you. I'm going to raise that child of my own. I love it like my own. And he said, I'm still going to love you. And man, that was a little time went by. And this lady by the name of Gomer done the same thing again the second time. Hey, she went out, committed adultery against her husband, got pregnant with another child. Hey, no, Hosea must have been a good man to get past that. He looked past that and said, I'll raise this child also. I love it as, as mine, and I forgive you. I love you just the way y'all. A little bit of time went on, and this woman by the name of Gomer done the same thing again. But she fell a little deeper into sin this time and became a slave. And man, she was going to be sold on the slave market. Can you imagine Hosea sitting there wondering what am I going to do this time? And God nudges up against him and speaks to his heart said, Do you love her? Hey, this is a woman that's committed adultery. Had these children of other men and this man's still loving her and taking care of her. She does it the third time, falls into sin deeper, becomes a slave, 
and is being sold on a slave market. God pulls up to Hosea and says, you better go do something. Can't you imagine Hosea going down to that slave market, standing there looking around? Slaves being sold all around him. And he looks up and sees his wife, the one he loves, being sold. Can't you imagine it comes about the time they're going to auction her off? And Hosea goes waving his hand and said, I'll pay the price. Hey, that's nothing but mercy, nothing but grace, nothing but love. Yeah. Hosea looks at her and says, I bought her. Man, can't you imagine Jesus looking past our sins and buying the sin of love you? Hey, I don't know if this happened or not, but can you imagine old Gomer? And Hosea, after he's purchased her, I'm kind of seeing maybe taking his coat off and going up and putting it around her and saying, I still love you. I love you just the way you are. But can't you imagine Hosea looking at her and saying, I forgive you. I love you just the way you are. I forgive you. Man, I don't know how anybody would get past that. That man had God on him, had love down in his heart. Man, I don't know how God ever forgives anything like me and you. Hey, I read a story a few years back about a man up in old highs reading a little thing. Of, and he got to telling about this man and his wife, how that how that this man's wife had left him and run around on him. She just took off and he couldn't find her anywhere. They said he put ads in the different newspapers in different parts of the country for years just trying to find her. Searching everywhere, never could find her. Then one day the telephone run and said it was his wife. Said she said on the other end of the phone, I've got saved by God's grace. I don't want to ask you to forgive me. I want to come home. Man, how could you get past that? They said that man told her, said, come on home, I love you, I forgive you. Said before, before, before she ever got home, she was in a car wreck and died. Said that man was devastated. Said he loved that woman more than anything anybody had ever loved. But you know he forgave her before she ever got home. They said a few days went by, a few weeks. They said they called him. He had bought a tombstone and had it set out there on her grave. And said, what do you want me to put on that tombstone? He said, nothing but her name and under it. I want you to write forgiven. They said several people asked him why he wanted forgiven wrote on that. He said, there's no telling how many people will walk through that graveyard and look and see that and say forgiven. Ain't you glad we got a God that forgives us? A God that sought us out, a God that teaches us, and a God that bought us. Hey, that, that Boaz, man, that, that Redeemer, he sought her out, he, and Naomi began to teach her. Hey, that's the top of the Holy Ghost, our teachings. Then he bought her. You know, I'm glad we serve one that purchased us. He's still taking care of us. We ain't forgot about this morning. Hey, we live in a world that's kind of like Moab today. You've got to be careful where you go, what you do. But ain't you glad we got that, that place we can run to? We may not can run over to Bethlehem, but ain't you glad we can run to the cross, run to His feet, and find rest in peace? And I appreciate God loving us that much. You know, I think this morning we might all just want to get up and come around this altar for just a minute. I'm not going to give an invitation, but I'd like for us to come around the altar this morning. You know, there's a lot of things that need to be prayed about. Everybody in here has got people that need prayer, got family, those that are sick. But I think the Lord just come around and just thank God that He purchased us one day, saw us out, and He's still teaching us this morning.